Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 224, second day of December. The end of 2021 is in sight. We have probably only one more of these meetings in 2021, and then it will be 2022. I don't have anything to think about special in 2022. It's just another year. Eh, so whatever, kind of like 2021 was. It's not an, yeah, I guess even. Is it a leap year yet? I don't think it's a leap year yet. Anyway, uh, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, and are watching it in the future. Let's go jump in. What are we doing today? Uh, we're going to do triage. We missed the last meeting due to Bob being sick and me being behind and things like that. So uh, we did not do triage. So we have a few more issues to cover. I uh, want to talk about the GitHub Actions adventure that Bob went uh, about. And uh, that I want to and just kind of update people on what went on there. Maybe get a little color commentary for Bob. I know he's very excited to not use his four-letter words. Um, Wix v4 baselines I want to talk about. Uh, we've we've learned some things about our build process, or we finally got answers from Visual Studio, so I want to talk about how that could fit in, what we want to do there, and then we'll do the questions and comments. So uh, I think we got a full meeting. Uh, for those of you that are in the chat, go ahead and say hi. I know Ron and Jacob showed up. It's great to have you guys here all the time. Let's go get this started. Bob, ready? Yes. All right. We're skipping the first two because that's the pattern we have. They're already assigned and things like that. Bug in Ukrainian localization. Ah, checked in and corrected are attached. Hmm. Um, do we, I don't know. What do we do with this? It's, yeah, we can, we've taken localization changes before. So who um, wants to do this? I will take it. Okay. The MSI log file status does not reflect the installation status. This was moved to a discussion. So this can be gone? Hmm. Why is this here? Uh, maybe I didn't refresh. There we go. Okay. Ha. Uh target is project restore support. It does not exist in the project thrown when MS build path parameter was provided for NuGet restore. Yeah, so this will get fixed in Wix 4. And people will just have to kind of hack around in 3 until we get there. So, I mean, the hack is simple enough, right? You you just apply an empty target? Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, go ahead and give this to me and tag it with MS build, and I will put it in my MS build stuff that I'm doing. Okay. Um, heat uses directory ref for standard directories, which is deprecated. Um, target there, really? Um, I probably should take this. I did the standard directory stuff. I don't really want to, but probably should do it. So unless someone wants to take this off my plate, uh, go ahead and give that to me. I don't hear a rush of people volunteering. I don't either. Sean, V4 theme util billboard display issues. Yeah, billboards, funky things. Um, I assume you open this issue means that you're not particularly excited to fix it. Uh, not really. Yeah. And Bob said he was going to take a look at it anyway, so... Oh, I did? Well, you, I brought up that there were billboard problems with the dialogue. Remember I said, like, the control IDs, they kind of assumed that the Windows APIs assume that will be flat. So there could be problems with billboards since now its controls are nested. Nope, don't remember, but yeah. You know, All right. I'm old, that happens. <laughs> and then I had said that I was tempted to revert the billboard back to V3 to avoid any of those issues, and you said you'd take a look at it. Yeah, definitely but... don't remember volunteering. <laughs> um, yeah, that's interesting. Um. I'll, I'll I'll take it, but I yeah, it's going to be low priority because it's a billboard thing. Yeah. Now I admit I've actually used it um, in a in a project for a fire giant customer, and if you if you have good graphics people, billboards can look very cool, um, but they're still billboards. <laughs> 
it, I don't know. It, it it feels very 90s to me, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it doesn't feel very, you know, modern, which is why it's, for me it's going to be a low priority thing. Um, well, did they, yeah. re- did they really ahead. need the ability to have something else than an image? Um, Progress bar? No. Uh, Let's go with some progress bar. It's, it, I mean, that's going anyway. to be the most common thing. Look, right? it's billboards. We only care so much about them. Well, I'll, I'll take a look and then we'll go from there. Yeah, that's that's my, my thinking. Well, I mean, like, in V3, you could only have images for the whole billboard control. Correct, yep. And then I guess Fire Giant decided to let you put whatever controls you wanted inside a billboard. I would, again, memory, you're you're asking for memory recollection, and that's problematic. Um, I don't recall using anything other than images. Um, but it's not impossible. Hyperlink? I'm trying to remember what it might have been. I don't, yeah, I don't. Long time ago. Uh, now I'm, I'm, yeah, it was a long time ago, and although I admit, now I'm curious uh, to see if <laughs> it was actually a thing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's possible. I'll take a look. I'll take a look. All right. So, yeah, using heat directory in MS Build 64 is going to be a problem. So you either have to do run a separate process. I so. didn't really understand why this didn't already work. Because like we are, we already have run a separate process equals like we have that Wix tools out of proc yep. property or whatever. Yep. And that's supposed to be set automatically if MS build is not. Like it looks at a does, pro- he, does heat process directory architecture? respect it? I mean, yeah. Well, heat heat dot xe is marked as x eighty six. It's not MSIL. Oh. It's not any CPU. Yeah. For for com uh, harvesting. So purposes. what I was seeing was it looks at the process architecture environment variable to decide whether to default that Wix tools out of proc, true or false. So. Just from glancing at it, it looked like Wix tools out of proc is supposed to default to true if it's 64 bit. And then that run tool is, or run a separate process is supposed to be in the target already. Like you shouldn't have to hard code it to true. Hmm. Interesting. Is it yeah, possible because that way we would directory work them. Doesn't, doesn't respect that? I kind of assumed it was on the the base class, but yeah, I thought it looked in the it was in the base class. I thought okay, yeah. So I didn't try to repro this, but I just took a glance and I didn't see. It looked like it was supposed to work. I wonder if Visual Studio isn't setting whatever the base class is looking for. Or the bait the target is looking for. I mean, from the from the you know, stack trace, it's not definitely not running out of proc. Mm-mm. And we know that MS Build inside Visual Studio is kind of funky. It it'd be interesting to see if it fails from 64-bit MS Build as well. Yeah, I don't know. I'll take a look. Util close application incorrect attribute description in the documentation. All right, go ahead and give this to me. I'll go add it to my list of things to fix as I'm doing things. They're Let's calling see. the task directly so the default isn't getting passed. Oh, yeah. So th- this, I saw this. Oh. This before build thing is kind of weird. So that's, yeah. That's re- whoever add destroyer twenty four is. That's that's a good pickup. I saw this and I was staring at this, going, "This is strange." I thought the heat directory could run differently, but or run more automatically or something like that. But I I don't use heat. I don't like heat, so I kind of stay out of it. 
Um, but yeah, that might be the problem. Is that they're using it? Yeah. You know, yeah, in, in a way reasonable. that yeah, if you use it this way, it doesn't work. But yeah, okay. That's reasonable. Cool. Thank you. <sighs> Fantastic. Save myself some investigation time, uh-huh. or at least or thinking about right the bug time. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. So we're closing that as user error. <laughs> I'll 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 make a pass to the targets and then say yes you need to do this you're using it wrong <laughs> I like you're that. holding it wrong who's ad destroyer twenty four like if you're willing to say who you are that'd be great because sometimes you guys have these Twitch names because I know Twitch has its own space that you have to go take them but then we know who you are in the mailing list always nice to put the people together anyway um, let's see Wixel files not parsing if XMLNS is missing I think I yes right someone mentioned this yeah in a discussion so i opened this issue and i gave it to myself because the converter needs to solve this problem and do the right thing um and hey ron you've done some uh converter bugs in the past if you want to take a converter bug uh feel free to go take this one away from me if you want it but we can take the triage and put it in a converter i think i left it here just so we talked about it All right, well, add the store 24, we're very happy to have you. That is a very high quality first contribution. I tell you what, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to beat that. Let's see, where did I leave off? Oh, don't work. Well, see, here's another one saying project harvesting C++ doesn't work. Is this a dupe of the other one? Project reference, oh. And then it hits this and then fails to look, oh, hmm. Oh, VC targets MS build is empty during the execution of heat and it doesn't find the default. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is heat project? Project harvesting. Yeah, project harvesting is extremely, extremely fragile. Ah, and then, yeah, Sean has said that, yeah, it was deployed side by side. So see that and that. So is this a new issue, Sean, or is it a dupe of those two? Oh, they're both. Wow. Yeah, I think it's a dupe right unless we wanted to bring forward the work i did in week before yeah no i don't really care about that so <laughs> nope all right that's cool i said there, wait, this, do, do we have an open bug for that or are they all well, well, fixed in fixed v4 it, sorry is project harvesting for c++ projects fixed in four well, it's not C++ projects wasn't the problem. It's the tools uh, version. Sorry. Yeah. The MS. Right. Right. And is that fixed? Yeah. Oh. Nifty. Okay. Cool. All right. Moving on. Project properties in VS22 unreadable. Yep. This has already been uh, fixed up by the guy that did the first 2022 fix. Um, go ahead and give this to me. I need to go look at it. He made a change in it, changing the button face. I need to make sure that it doesn't change the color that makes it impossible to read on older versions of Visual Studio, which is actually one of my biggest concerns. Yeah. Um, cannot load actually, a net five. Oh. For the for the heat one, I think oh. I I think I left it open because I might have. It might not be handling the 64-bit thing correctly. Like, if you run it in 64-bit in this build. It might be passing an x86 heat, the x64 directory for a mess build, which might be a problem. Yeah. I think I needed to look at that and make sure that was working. So you want to leave this open or leave one of those other ones open? The project harvesting one. Right, so 6641 here. Yeah, I need to make sure that works because yeah okay are you wanting me to assign it to you i guess yeah <laughs> with with Careful. enthusiasm yes all right cannot load a dotnet 5 assembly on on build correct you this will not work in wix 3. well it won't so, so they don't need sorry. to do it because they don't need to gack it because you can't gack right msi assembly. doesn't support dotnet core and dotnet correct. core doesn't support the gack correct so Correct. So, is this there is, any reason to use any of those attributes? 
The only that reason that you might do it is because this will give you the bind path, the bind properties for the assembly. So you can, oh. since you mark it as .NET, then you mark it as assembly application to force it into its current location, not in the GAC. And then Wix will be like, oh, it's going in the GAC. Hey, I can get you those properties because it's an assembly. Thank you for telling me that. Oh, um, that's interesting. Okay. But, but, but you know what? Nobody would... uses those because <laughs> well, they're not terribly useful bind path. Uh, values in most yeah. cases but that's the only i mean because when when you use assembly application to quote unquote force it into the same directory it doesn't actually force anything if you're not no. putting it in the GAC, the attributes really have no um no effect on the installation the bind properties the bind variables are i mean okay that's potentially something interesting but yeah that I, sorry, I gave you the one thing that right, right, gives right. you, <laughs> and it's not a big thing. And most people don't even know about them because we don't advertise them widely. And honestly, those don't have a lot of value. I don't know why we add them. I don't know what scenario that we thought they would be useful. Interesting. Maybe there's something in the registry that you can, when you point at these things in the GAC for COM or something like that, maybe it was useful. Well, I mean, way, but I... Well, they have there, – there's Darwin registration. Um, I know that, unfortunately. Um, but I don't, I don't think there's anything uh, – there, there are things, right? You know, um, there's an API like, I don't know, MSI provide assembly or something like that. Yeah. But, again, that, that's, right. that's MSI, which does not support that next <sighs> Yeah. So, anyway. None of this is – basically, remove the two attributes that you don't need anyway, uh, three attributes. Remove the three attributes and carry on with your life, and things will work better. Yeah, because um, you're, you're lying when you say it's .NET, because that means .NET Framework. Not that's .NET correct, Framework. actually. Yeah. That, yeah. Actually, you know, that's a good point, too, is that, that uh -huh. .NET is not .NET. That's .NET Framework, because they totally messed up the branding on .NET, and now – can't name any of these things, <sighs> which is actually on a future slide. We're going to have this problem of what do you call these things? Anyway, .NET Core forever. Um, Diffix app is deprecated, so Wix Diffix app extension should be removed from Wix 4. Um, yeah, I it was I didn't realize that Microsoft had officially come out and said they've killed it off. But given all their yeah, they actually they actually did like um, they actually they said have we have done things that will make this not work well. And you're like, wow, thank you for being honest and forthcoming. Um, forthcoming well, being the big part. They didn't honest. say that. Not, they just said, don't do this anymore. Use this new thing. No, as, I, they are, as they are wont to do. Oh, maybe it was somewhere else that I saw it, and it was on the Microsoft site. Anyway, they're, they're version lying, and they have started breaking their own software, and they don't care enough about it to fix it, and they didn't give us the source code, so we've never been able to fix these bugs. The only issue I have is should remove this in v4 for the cases where diffix app does still work which is not windows 10 and and i <laughs> it's the I, i'm i'm so part of part of what i i part of the reason i open this bug is because i've been doing you know all the stupid versioning stuff in the extensions and supporting multiple platforms and all that. And, you know, it's just we have so many yeah. old, old things that, that you know, just how, how long do we have to carry these things? That's, 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 that's the really my question. Yeah. That is the yeah. question. And it's not, you know, and I'm not saying that, well, I guess the title is saying that we should remove it, but I'm not going that far because it, it is kind of a question you know how how should we how far forward should we carry these things because to an extent it's like oh well we want to make sure that people can upgrade to wix 4 true but you know we're going to say the same thing in wix 5 so at a certain point it's like by by supporting these things are we essentially committing to supporting them forever well not forever like we have finally gotten rid of xpsp2 <laughs> Well, yes, but by doing so, we didn't actually reduce. No. Yeah, we still have all the same extensions. No, no, uh, we didn't accept the extensions. We did 
change burn a little bit, but yeah. Sorry, not to say there were no changes, but it doesn't, you know. My uh, the simplifications were smaller. Um, I guess it, essentially what we'd be saying is that if you want to use diffix app, you have to use Wix three. If you want to use yes. diffix app, you have to use. If you want to install drivers this way, you have to go use Wix three. Yes. And we're not fixing bugs there, so you're. Well, we can't fix bugs, and in fact, one of the the oddities with diffix app, especially, is that you know, of course, they never because it's been deprecated for so long, they don't support ARM sixty four. Yes. So that's another like, you know, there's actually an open bug on that because you can actually build an ARM sixty four MSI with diffix app, and it doesn't fail. To build. Right. Sean, do you have an opinion? I guess it could go either way. Yeah. Like we could force people to use V3 or I was just hoping keep you were it. gonna push me one way or the other. Ron I have no Jacob? strong feelings because we already you know, we we've already done the work, right, to bring it into to V four. Uh, yeah. Um, so it, it's not a tremendous amount of additional work. Um, and, you know, Diffix app is just an excellent example. Um, there are others like DirectX and MSMQ and Com Plus, which I know are still in use. So, yeah. and we, which is also true for Diffix app. But is, is MSMQ just, dead? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Com Plus? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't <laughs> I don't know that I ever really understood Complos. Anyway, um, right. uh, fear, uncertainty, doubt. I don't know. Should we get rid of it or not? When do we I'm cut the tail? Essentially, when do we cut the tail on the fix? Exactly. Up? Exactly right. Exactly. I, I don't I don't think it survives the next version. Okay. The problem is that I can't tell how far Windows seven has gone. How much does Windows seven Right, right, right. Right. I don't think it's it's stuck around quite as uh, ardently as XP did, but I don't That's not helpful either, Jacob. <laughs> Everybody's kind of like, ah, ah, ah. I mean, I guess we're technically supporting Windows 7, right? So if the yeah. VIX app is supported or is still expected to work, then probably yeah. keep it. Yeah. I mean, it does that's, kind that's, of come down that, to what, is, what does it mean that that Microsoft has deprecated the VIX app? You know, they yeah. didn't retroactively go nuke it, right. you know, so it, it will support Windows 7. It probably still supports Windows 10 for the drivers that it works with. But, you know, it's it's dead. But the truth is it's basically been dead for years anyway. I mean, because they deprecated it back in, I think, the 1607 WDK. Mm -hmm. So it's been years already. Um, yeah. And no one noticed. So should we deprecate it too? Just Add a warning every time you use it? I think that's yeah. probably what we're doing for. Yeah, okay. I think we remove the everything after the comma or change it. Diffix app is deprecated, so Wix diff extension should be deprecated in Wix form. Yeah, okay. I like that. Ah, this one. Uh, I hit this problem in this test when trying to build with Visual Studio 2022, and I was not able to dig into it deeply. So in hopes of getting other build things working, I take this test out and put a issue open on it. Um, Sean, I'm hoping you can take this because you understand more about this, the trim, the uh, self-contained stuff than I do. Um, yeah, I guess now that I can actually install VS22 and expect to be able to build Wix. 
Well, yeah. I guess I can actually take a shot at this. Yeah, hopefully it will. Well, and if not now, later. Right. It's just because at the time you filed this, we didn't know how to make it work. <laughs> yes. Well. Yeah. So hey. the thing Sean's referring to there is that we've been having problems on the build machines getting the Wix tool set building again, or building period, and the. I think Bob hypothesized that it was some complex interaction between the Windows SDKs and Sean had already opened an issue with Visual Studio that they'd ignored. So I used our contacts through Fire Giant to go poke some people inside Visual Studio and say, hey, uh, you guys really need to help us with this issue. This is starting to turn out to be a real lingering problem. It's not going away. And it worked. The, someone in C++ noticed it, came out and gave us, I don't know, two or three options to, to solve the build problem. Um, and Sean and or Bob are already digging into that to hopefully get us unblocked and get everything rolling again. And it was, in fact, as Bob hypothesized, a complex interaction between <laughs> those SDKs. And our targeting of old compilers uh, makes it challenging as well, which I will bring up in a little bit, but that's what Sean's referring to, and we're not 100% out of the woods yet, but we're farther, right? Uh, it's working on the App Air 2019 okay. image. So then I just have to get the GitHub thing solved, but that the problem with the GitHub in action was something else, not the first issue. Right, not yeah, the... I guess, was I supposed to create an issue for that? No, 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 it's fine. I, I have a set of things going in, so it's fine. I will, I will poke at it soon. Anyway, so that's the history of all this. And hopefully... now, I am curious, though, because your change affected only one project, right? So I'm I'm curious how this isn't a problem in like all of the extension custom actions still. Because we were already building the V142 tool set for everything. That's right, right. All the custom actions use the latest tool set. The okay. problem was is that we were building multiple tool sets for right, right. MBA native. And this one, so you're saying MBA native does not need the 2015 or 2017 not tool set. No, it's, it's always going to be the latest. Yeah. It's like the custom action set. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Okay. Okay. We do just need to follow up back on that issue with the Visual Studio. The one thing I did say we would do is describe our final solution for that issue, whatever it was. Uh, um, so yeah, I, I added a comment saying that we didn't actually need to be building it for that tool set. So we stopped building it for the tool set. That was our solution. Okay. Cool. And But it was still useful to have all that rest of that information could explain deeply what the problem was underneath. All right. All right. So let's, that's all, uh, let's double check here. Five. Yeah. All right. That's all of the issues open. Um, that's going to go away and that's going to go Sean. Okay. Great. Let's move on. We're done with triage. What are we talking about next? Oh, we're going to go tell the story of GitHub. Yeah. GitHub adventure. All right. I'm going to kind of lay this out while I, by Bob prepares because I'm going to have him add whatever thing he wants to. Um, a while ago, we saw an announcement that GitHub was going to simplify their build op build images by essentially re reducing the amount of software they put on it by, I thought it was quite a bit. And one of the things they were removing was Wix 3, which was clearly going to be a problem if they did that. Uh, and those And when GitHub makes that change, as it turns out, this was something I guessed, but I now saw for sure that they use the same images for both GitHub Actions and Azure Pipelines. So we're going to get a lot of people uh, hitting it. So Bob opened the PR uh, to add Wix 3 back to the images. It's a nice work, all that kind of stuff. What he did not add back was Votive, because why would you have Votive on the build machines? Which we noticed they had in there and had not intuited deeply why they had why they were bothering to put the votive projects on there. But it became pretty clear after the PR was in and people started using Wix 3 without votive installed, the old style Wix projects, were the, which are the Wix projects created before MS Build decided to move into Visual Studio instead of being 
um, out in a public location and thus had a, a partial backwards compatibility fix that broke all the old Wix projects that we created a, we worked around by adding a special target to Votive to be installed into Visual Studio to hop out of Visual Studio and go find the correct Wix targets. It was a huge mess way back then. But this explains why they were installing Votive uh, in these images because they were keeping these redirect targets around, which by the way, they also were installing an old Votive, <coughs> excuse me, an older Votive because we had already deprecated that and moved to not having that in the currently released Votive. So essentially people with very old projects that had never updated, had never gone through fixing it to get aboard the new way MS Build wanted things working, uh, everything got broken. So Bob's PR got rolled back because of all the problems that came about because of this, essentially exposing how many old Wix projects there were out there. And then it looks like GitHub reverted to the previous implementation, which was all of Wix 3 on there plus Votive being installed. Is that the whole story, Bob? Did I miss parts? Oh, you got a lot. You got lots wrong too. Oh, but. well, then I probably shouldn't have told the story at all. So um, go ahead and so, rewind back to the appropriate point, Bob. Um, okay. And uh, you were mostly correct. I mean, to be fair. Um, no, so so I, I'm not aware of any um, simplification impacting Wix. What what was happening is that because there was no vote of 2022 uh, when they introduced their Windows 2022 images, which really are Windows 2022 and Visual Studio 2022. Because there was no votive, they did not install Wix at all, including the build tools. And as you point out, for votive, for quote unquote modern votive, without any redirect targets, votive is not needed on the build machine. Um, it does nothing. Um, but because there was no votive, whoever you know created these new images, the 2022 images, did not include the Wix build tools. So I said, well, that's dumb. So what would it take to do that? Well, it turns out it takes a lot uh, because their <laughs> their image creation is all based off of Azure VMs, um, which means I actually spent you know theoretical money to to create this change. And when I went in there, I noticed that they're installing Votive and they they pivot. Uh, I mentioned this in, in one of the threads that this change caused. They, they pivot based on the Windows version, but really it's all about the Visual Studio version. Um, so you know this this wasn't a problem with win, with Windows 2022. It was a problem with Visual Studio 2022. And then again, it wasn't actually a problem because Votive isn't needed on the build machine. Um, otherwise, yeah, essentially, um, you're correct. Um, my change removed Votive, and because I didn't notice, this was my fault. I didn't notice that they were installing one of the 0 0.9 versions of Votive for Visual Studio 2017, um, I didn't, it didn't occur to me that the redirect targets would be a thing because current versions of Votive, you know, 1.004 or later, don't include the redirect targets even for VS 2017, which is why they intentionally are pointing to one of the 0 0.9 versions. Actually, they're pointing to a 0 0.9 version before, uh, I think it's the very first 0 0.9 version, just to retain the redirect target. Um, so my removing Votive broke the, the 2017, sorry, the, the Windows 2016 slash VS 2017 uh, build image. So they reverted my change and a few days later, they created another pull request that was essentially my change, but kept Votive installed. 
and that has, as of yesterday, rolled out. So the good news is Wix 3 is the Wix 3 build tools are installed in the uh, 2022 image, um, and Votive is back on the 2016 and 2019 images. So at the moment, there's nothing else for us to do. Um, even when Votive 2022 is, you know, quote unquote, officially available, there's no reason to go back and add it. Um, it does nothing. No modern version of Votive does anything for the build, right. for, for a, a build machine. So. All right. So, yay. Time poorly spent. But mm, there we go. So um, were we talking about adding the redirect targets back to Votive? And well, adding a warning when you use it? So that that's one option is for us to go in, put the redirect targets in there and add an explicit message to tell people to go fix their projects to stop using the redirect targets. Um, when to do that, we'd actually have to revive the redirect targets. And put them into the latest votive and all that. Um, and we could do that. I just wasn't sure how, m once I understood the whole thing and how GitHub essentially rolled back to where they were before, I wasn't sure how much value there was in that because we'd have to then try to get them to roll forward the votive just to, to throw a bunch of warnings on people. And I was like, uh, is right. there value in doing that? Here. It would probably not get get merged. Well, yeah. people, so people are going to get broken when they try to move from the 2017 image to the 22 image, right? Absolutely. Because the redirect targets aren't there anymore. Right. So they're going to complain to GitHub that they upgraded and it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, but, you know. They're not complaining to us, so let them complain to get now. Um, yeah, but you know the truth is this is something. This is something that you know we all had to go through because of the changes in in MS Build. I mean, it was a huge pain when this happened. You know, yeah, it took us way back up with a solution that didn't yeah. break everybody the first time. Right, right, and you know, frankly, it. I mean, I, I doubt they're going to change it at this point, but it's always, it, it's kind of fragile and it's completely reliant on MS build retaining this really odd behavior. So, you know, I've always, I, I've never been, you know, thrilled with, with how it worked out. Um, but the truth is I, I can't picture a scenario in which someone doesn't run a local build before they try to do a CI CD build. And as long as you, you know, try to build it locally and realize, oh, it fails, at which point maybe you, you know, come looking for support from from Wix and then you get told, well, here's what you have to do. It it won't be a problem that's specific to the CI build unless you, you know, never try to build it locally. So the, the Which question... they must have been doing because unless they were also individually installing that ancient vo version of Votive locally. Um, well, it's, that's entirely possible, right? I mean, I'm sure I know people, you know, Votive, it works. Why would they upgrade? Um, but yeah, I'm, you're not wrong. The question is, do we proactively add the redirect targets, go back, verify it all, fixes all these problems, add the warning, make sure it only triggers when it's supposed to, and to head off the inevitable, uh, I upgraded to the GitHub 2022 image and it's broken. And GitHub needs to publish the votive to those images as well. well I don't the, think it buys as much. Was the redirects target in votive when we split it out to its own repo? Yes, they're still there. Yes, they're around there somewhere. 
I, so I, I don't shouldn't know that take true. much work to put it back. I, I, I don't think that's true, though. The... Last time I looked, version 1004 of Vote of 2017 does not include the redirect target. I mean, I looked at the V6, and it doesn't have them. Yeah, it's not in the V6. I thought they were still around, but maybe... Oh, they, sorry. They might be in, in source control still. Visual Studio 2017 has a folder called redirects. That's what... It, yeah, that's where it's at. Okay. Okay. So it's... Bring that back. Put it in... Wait. Is it... Was it not in 2819? No. So we've already been dealing with this in 20... Yeah. 19. Like I said... That's and, and in fact the the virtual images the build images ship the the current version of Votive for 2019. It's only 2017 that they go back to the 0 0.9 version okay. to get the redirect targets. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> which is part. So part of me. This is why. Which, I which think, actually, I think Bob's saying is that people upgraded for 2017, 2019, and went through this process. And then, so I don't see any other way they. I don't see any other way it could work. That's right. Because there are no redirect targets in 2019, unless, unless they're using, you know, we, unless they're using a VS 2017 build. But I think but that wouldn't uh, help you. That wouldn't help you inside local build. So no, no, not if you're using the current version of Votive for either yeah. VS 2017 or VS 2019. Yeah, so I, I think the experience of people moving from 2017 to 2022, they're going to find out, like like Bob said, they're going to find out pretty fast. <laughs> like, oh, you moved. Oh, yeah, your targets are busted. You need to fix those because people have already had to do it for 2019. Okay. And like I said, I, you know, the, well, like I implied, um, the, the team that manages those images seems hypersensitive to, um, keeping exact behavior, which is kind of weird because they nonetheless upgrade plenty of dev tools, including Wix. I mean, anyone using Wix, anyway, never mind. I don't want to go off on a rant. Um, so I think the idea of, of adding warnings, even if it is telling you know the right thing to do, would not be appreciated. All right, I, I I had missed the fact that these were never in 2019. That's the thing that I had, because I went down the same path that Sean did, and it was yeah. in 2019. It's like, yeah, people already lived this. So, yep. ah, gosh, legacy. The things Visual Studio ignores. They're like, yeah, we're on the new version. We don't worry about the old versions. And here we are supporting several versions, which is a fantastic segue onto my other way, since we're doing nothing here other than educating people. Moving on, let's talk about our baselines. And I originally started this with just the um, .NET framework and .NET Core. And then given the, the build uh, breaks and the answers we got, I thought we should come back and talk about the C++ code as well. Um, I went out and tried to find numbers, dates, of when these things were um, out of mainstream uh, support so that we could have something to anchor times around. And the question is, I just want us to reevaluate where we're at and what where we want to be. So um, these are all, I think, all the platforms that we are currently support, or the NetFX, NetCore, C++ platform, so I think these are the three that we have to decide how much of them of each do we support. On the .NET Framework side, this is for MS Build, old school .NET Framework MS Build, and our extensions, uh, our, our tasks in MS Build, supporting those and having them run, as well as having uh, no, just that. It's just the MS Build tasks for that. And right now we're targeting 461, or, oh shoot, now I've forgotten. Is it one or two? And then I went off and got it from the internet. I think uh, it is 461. All right, 461. Because that's .NET Standard 2.0 or whatever. Right, which matches .NET Standard 2.0, which is out of service next year. 
the middle of next year along with a Windows 10 timeline. So all these Net 4, 6 builds, and you go look at them, they're all like ship, these Net 4, 6, and later numbers ship within um, the, uh, they're all aligned with Windows 10 builds and where their things are being used. So if we wanted to, we could look at moving to Net 472 off of the Net 461 um, because Net 472 is the last one that's still in, will be in mainstream enterprise support in next year. Or we could say on 461 because it doesn't matter. And this one maybe I don't know that it matters much. Right? It's just the size of the stuff we have because we pull in more stuff since it doesn't, 472 has better net standard support. Right. Yeah, it was the first version. I think it's the first version to have like all the base net standard stuff built in. So you still end up with like essentially redirect assemblies, but Less. all the core functionality is there. Right. So that's the benefit of moving to 472. I yeah, don't... that's the only benefit. On net core side, on .NET Core side, uh, .NET 5 is essentially out of service in the point that it doesn't matter. Um, it's not long-term anyway. So moving to that doesn't make sense. We are currently targeting 3.1 as the last long-term servicing. That's up in the middle of next year, or end of next year, sorry, end of next year. Um, and then .NET 6 has occurred a couple years longer than that. Um, I don't know the adoption of .NET Core out there of 3.1 versus 6.0 and what's on people's machines with the whole side-by-sideness of it and everything. I don't have a strong feeling of which way to go here. I think we definitely need to set the major version role forward and make sure that we work on .NET or on net, .NET 6. Um, the only thing this matters for is Wix.exe as a .NET tool, correct? Um, Well, all the X's. All the .NET tools. All the X's. Like Heat and that might be it. Wix XE. Yeah. Is that the only two things, really? I think that's the only things left. Well, and Heat, we're not, we don't, we're not, quote unquote, shipping it at the moment. Well, I mean, we will, though. So it'll be in I there. But understood. Sorry. It's my, those two. The point was that, for the most part, we're using self-contained deployment. No? No. No. These are .NET tools, so they're built on .NET. You have to have .NET installed. Well, <laughs> .NET Core. I hate these names. Why did .NET do SDK. Names? We need the SDK installed. No, I think you just need the .NET runtime. Okay. Which is um, in the SDK. The SDK is just bigger than the .NET. Runtime. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. I need, I need to backtrack. We're talking about Preview Zero, right? We haven't decided, I think, how we're going to ship. Wix.exe forever. No? Well, if we stay with the .NET, I guess my current thinking is we're going to stay I, with the I, .NET I, tool uh, unless something hit us that said that that does not work. Okay. Never mind then. I thought that was still an open question. No, I, I, I don't... Because, I, because of the acquisition story, it's, it's you know... You have to get .NET before you can get Wix, right? Yes. Correct. Unless you use MS Build, which of course then you already had the .NET SDK. So, all right. So, I don't have a strong feeling on either of these. I don't. Know, I honestly don't have a strong feeling on any of these. I want to put them out there and see if anybody has like, you know, we really should cut the tail on .NET Framework 4.6 or .NET Core 3.1 and just move to 6.0. Um, and then the last one is the Visual Studio, the C++ platform tool set. We are still supporting 1.4.1 for all of our libs and building them uh, for, to support Visual Studio 2017. Should we keep doing that? This one's interesting as it's, help, it's targeting people that use Visual Studio 2017 to build their software. 
um, as opposed to using 2019 or 2022. And should we cut 2017 from the end? And I bring that up because this honestly adds, this would, if we, of all the things, this would probably cut the most out of the time of our build process um, and things like that, cutting the one for one platform tool set, cutting 2017. So the C++ baseline here is essentially just what we build a native SDK for. Yes. And I noticed you already cut out VS 2015, which today we support. In V4, we support. We still support V4 in 20, okay, well that's my mistake. I thought, oh <laughs> wait, we build 2015 from the 141 tool set? No, before we use V140. No, okay then. Uh, okay. I definitely. I think we were doing that because we could. <laughs> well, I well, see. we haven't had this right. discussion, right? Yeah. So yeah, baseline. Oh, what we haven't done is we haven't added one four three yet. That's right. where I went. Because that was that was normally something I would do as part of the custom action stuff. Right. Um, when, when we get a new version of Visual Studio, but I haven't been able to build Wix and yes. I installed VS twenty twenty two. So. Yes. Right. Windows SDK integrations be damned. Yep. Right. Um, there is also uh, something I briefly mentioned before that um, it's not clear to me that we actually need to build all of these different libraries. Right. Uh, Visual, Visuals, the Visual C++ team has done a much better job over the past, you know, well, basically since 2015, VS 2015, um, of maintaining backward compatibility um, yeah, as in being able to build or consume libraries, static libraries um, that cross major versions of Visual Studio, which is a new thing that used to be not something that, that routinely happened. Um, but they, they've been doing a really good job. Part of that was you know, the, the UCRT stuff, I think. So it's possible that we could build, uh, well, so that's backward compat compatibility. Forward compatibility is a, a bigger challenge. Um, so for example, it might be possible that we could just build the VS 2017 libraries and cover all of VS 2017, 2019, and 2022. Build um, with 141. And just ship one lib or one I lib see. per architecture. And pretend it's 141, 142, and 143. Well, I wouldn't even go that far. I'd just ship one lib and not, you know, not. Currently, yeah, we ship version specific and architecture specific versions of all of our native static libraries. I'm suggesting we could just drop the, the version from the matrix and just ship architecture specific ones. Until um, we have to add the, that back into the matrix again. Well, there is that. Um, I'd rather keep uh, 141 in there and just say that use 141 for 142 and for 143 if we know that it works. Because um, I think we can do sure, that in sure. the, um, in the, uh, the NuGet package in the end. Um, yes. Well, in fact, if we did that, it would help the NuGet package because right now you can't use the NuGet package if it's not a uh, version in the in the props file for the NuGet package for the dutil NuGet package. It if you are using like VS 2022, the props file says, "Oh, I don't know about toolset 143," so it doesn't include dutil. I thought we did the whole props thing. Oh, sorry, you're saying if you don't use the props thing. No, I'm saying if you use the props, notice on line, you know, 13. I'm not sure. I'm not broadcasting this, but yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, the, 
the props only add the DU to library for specific matches. Oh, so right. it matches for V140, 141, and 142. Gotcha. If the tool set is 143, it just, oh, I guess you don't need DU at all. Right. Which it turns out is generally not, not true. I see. So you're saying we could ship it and say, hey, here's hoping to the future. We're going to use 141 for everybody or for everything. Yeah. All right. For everybody. And then when that doesn't come true, then we'll have to go back and retroactively update the props file to do the correct mapping. Yeah, and the so the interesting thing, I, well, I find it interesting, is if we treat NuGet as like the way you consume Dutal or the others, um, then it doesn't really matter what we build. We just, you know, for to the user, the user doesn't care. Right now, users care because you know they have to they have to go manually point to a particular deal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, right. The props file would let us hide, and we could cover the architecture as well, right? Yes. And we wouldn't. You wouldn't have to. We do. It, it doesn't matter how we arrange the build. We can hide all the the gory details. I think I'd rather throw an error if their tool set doesn't match what we have. Because they could be lower theoretically. Well, so I was thinking. I was thinking we could look at you know V one four. Because oh okay sorry so the other idea is it might be possible even though again forward compatibility is hard it might be possible that we could build with V one four three, and everyone could consume it down to. Twenty fifteen. I don't know. Maybe twenty fifteen. Well, whatever we find that it can be done. Yeah, yeah. All right. There is probably value in figuring that out. And then we can, and I would cut 2015 in a heartbeat. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, if, it didn't, if, one, nice. if it didn't work, exactly. Um, I, I even considered cutting 2017 um, if it, one four three could only, or if we could only do one four two board four three, could think about twenty seventeen, cutting twenty seventeen. Right, right. All right. Well, given what we just went through with the, you know, build VMs, PS twenty seventeen is still apparently in use. Um, That's a good point. That's a good point. But will it if you go to Wix four? Mm, yeah. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. So, Bob, you find this interesting. Would you mind doing that re a bit of research there to see if we can get away with this? Sure. I have nothing else better to do. Well, I'm just saying, if you, if you figure that no, out... I, I get, know. I, I, it's it's no, interesting enough to me. I, I would. No, I'm saying if you get the matrix right, I'm happy to go back into the NuGet packages and get the props files correct. Sure, um, sure. I understand what Sean's saying about erroring if we don't have something that we've tested against. So it may just be worth it for us to have an extra target in there that's like, hey, we support all these things, but we don't recognize 145. So right. warning, you're getting something built for 143 and just give them a message and then let them ignore it. So it's essentially a little extra MS build work there. I'm willing to do all that to get a nice experience for this, especially if it means we don't have to build the same code four times because we're going to have to add 143 if this doesn't work. Right. So 140, 141, 142, and 143. I was like, oh, no, 2015's got to go then. <laughs> I would kick 2017 too. You would? Okay, that's good yeah. to know. All right. Well then, okay, that's 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 good to know. How about uh, NetFX, Sean? Would you go to 472 to trim it and make things more svelte? Or is 461 fine? Uh. Either way, I mean, we're only building it once in yeah. that case. It's only for the MS build uh, tasks, right? There's a few well, things. Actually, you guys were, you guys wanted to build all the NuGet packages both ways. So, actually, all the NuGet packages have both 461 and 472. Right, because Net Standard has some funky behaviors on. For so, so if we stand on a standardized on 472, we could maybe get rid of that since the behavior of net standard on 472 is better and just 
say that, you know, the world has moved on since we made that decision, standardize on 472 and everything works better. I mean, we're talking about the build tools here, right? So yeah. we're not talking about customer machines for this one. And that's why I'm, it's a little easier to be, uh, to cut the tail harder on these things than it is for like to fix app in comparison. Um, how many people are still building, are on dev machines still building with a Windows machine that has 461 on it that has not been upgraded to 472? Yeah, no, I have no problem with dumping older dot net framework and dot net core. I mean, I don't even know. I the metrics I did not check is which dot net framework comes with Visual Studio, right? Because Visual Studio start shipping these. What did Visual Studio 2019 ship with? I don't know. Oh, remember. oh, oh. I was going to say, VS 2022 is only supported on Win 10 and above. So, we're Yeah, but which we... Win 10? That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's so many to choose from. No, there... I, oh, damn, because I actually looked this up. Uh, because I still have a machine running Windows 8.1 that I sometimes uh, play around with. In fact, that's the machine that I discovered that I could still build uh, Wix 4 on, because it can't install VS 2022. Um, but it was, as I recall, it was actually a fairly uh, recent version of uh, of Windows 10. It looked like, you know, Visual Studio was kind of cutting their. Uh, um, so to be fair, I'm looking at the matrix. I'm trying to find the matrix. So uh, let's see. Windows 10 20H2 is the only thing still in service in two weeks. In, in 12 days, Windows 10 20H2 and earlier are the only things in service in mainstream support. Well, yeah, but you got to look at the, the long-term servicing branch. So if you go long-term, then you end up back in 1809, which I think is how I ended up back here. Okay. So Visual Visual Studio 2022 is 1909 or higher. 1909 or higher. Well, okay, and that's out of service. So, All right, 1909 matched to. Oh, 1909 had 48 framework built in. There you go. So, so that is VS 2022. Moved. What's that? That's VS 2022, well, right? Yeah. All right, so they've moved 48 there. Um, is there any benefits of going to 4.8? I don't remember. I kind of stopped watching. From 4.7.2 to 4.8, did they improve the .NET standard support at all? I'm not aware of any, but I don't know. So maybe f so if we went to 4.7.2 and said that's good enough for that, that's interesting. Standardize on 4.7.2, and then we can use 4.7.2 plus .NET standard for all the code. Yeah. .NET Core, I'm inclined to stay with V3 and just set the major role forward so that we'll we will run correctly. We will be allowed to run on um, five and six. Ron's asking, do you really want to know what's broken in .NET 4.8.0? Oh, interesting. Wait, is Wix broken or is something else broken in 4.8.0. That, we'll, we'll wait for that. All right, so I, I if we stay on net core 3, then, because it's not like we need any of the features in 6 or 5. Um, and so if we stay there and then let it roll forward, and then do the roll forward, hopefully all our code just works um, moving up. I mean, I already put the rule forward in there, so. You did, all the way to the major? Because you you moved forward to like .NET 5 before I was willing to do that, I think, so. Well, I mean, I put it in the config file or whatever. Right. So as soon as you install that new runtime on your machine, it's going to use that. So it's right. been running on 5 this whole time. OK, or 6 in yeah. my case, since I have 6 on my machine now. OK. Um, well, then. All right, so I think... But is there any reason not to roll to V6? To move to the V6? You will have to have the .NET 6 runtime installed. So if you have the .NET 
core 3.1 installed, you'll have to install .NET 6 runtime to make to run Wix. Okay, you can't see it, but I'm shrugging. Yeah, it's so I guess that's the. I don't know the distribution of versions right now. So maybe I'll go poke well, email. Sorry, the, uh, the, the reason I'm the reason I'm shrugging is it already requires that you have a .NET Core runtime on your machine. Right. Right. So to an extent, does it matter what version we pick? There's always going to be someone who doesn't have the version that we need. The question is, do they have to go to .NET 6, or can they work with one that they might already have on their machine from well, longer? .NET 6 is new, right? It's only been around for a month. So it, it's just more people are likely to have .NET Core 3.1 than people that have .NET 6, simply due to time. Well, right. But I'm thinking of time, and as time passes, that will become less true. Absolutely. Absolutely true. No, as, sorry. As in, as in, as in, people will have to go install .NET Core three. No. Because no, that's the point. With you, with roll with roll forward, if they install .NET six, Wix will work there. Uh, okay, that's fair. But if we if we say six is our baseline, if they install if they ha install three and they try to run Wix there, it would say no, I don't work here. You need to get at least six. So by picking three, that's uh opens us up to more being able to run on more .NET runtimes, assuming we can automatically roll forward. Boy, if only there were a way to, I don't know, bootstrap this problem. Well, yeah. Never mind. It's a different installation experience then. But yes, I understand. A worse one. More steps for people, but if they don't have .NET Core already. Yeah. Well, never mind. All right. I, I, I would I would I don't care as much about that. I, I'm more interested in what we can take advantage of if we're on a you know modern .NET, more modern .NET. That's fair. We we'll, and we'll keep an eye out for that. I mean a lot of it's around the memory and things like that, I think, which some of that was in .NET Core three too. So I don't know that we're gonna get a lot of wins um in our code per se, given the kinds of things we do. Well, I'm more thinking about the fact that we're stuck on C sharp seven three, I think. Oh, newer C sharps. You're right, that's another thing. Yeah, you know, you'd be able to take care of advantage of newer C sharps. But that's a whole nother thing of how much do we want to do in Wix to modernize the code because there's still a lot of code that looks like dot net one one. That that is not not false. That is not false. <laughs> so uh that's a whole different uh ball of wax. All right. Yep. So the summary here is uh, 472. Let's just do NetFX 472. Right now, .NET Core v3.1, and we'll keep an eye out for reasons to move earlier, which I appreciate the language features. The C++ platform tool set, we're going to kill 2015 at Visual Studio 2015 support. Bob's going to do an experiment to see how many different libs do we actually have to build to make things work. And then I will, based on that, I will help or we'll make some changes to support 143, 142, and then we'll see how expensive it is for 141. So I think that's the summary. Building less native code would be a good thing. Because that's a lot of the time. Hmm. All right. Questions, comments, other things people want to talk about. Um, before the meeting, we were talking about I'm trying a new thing. I've been thinking about doing it for a long time, but I'm now doing a, a live coding. I haven't settled on the schedule exactly, but if you want to come out and hang out, um, the uh, you can do that. It's on, on my YouTube channel. I send it out on Twitter before I get going. Um, I'm, I want to try to do it at least once a week, but I do basically Wix stuff so you can hang out and talk and just whatever or see what's going on. Um, put it in the background and hear me drone on about all the various things going on um, and then pop in and ask various random questions. Um, the weather right now is rainy, but it's Seattle and it's December, so that's not surprising. Uh, and that's a 
completely reasonable question to stop by and just say, hey, something just to do, hang out. It's been, <laughs> haven't seen people in a while, so I thought I'd jump online and see how things are going out there. Uh, that's what I got on. Mark Stega says, I have a goal of producing a V4 version of building Wix with Prerex, et cetera. I'm trying to perform the build on system only in 2022. And yes, you are running into lots of issues that we are just now starting to work. Um, Wix devs is, I've put several messages on Wix devs. Mm, I don't know that I've seen several messages on Wix devs about building Visual Studio 2022. The, um, and I don't see anything from Mark Stega. I don't, unless I'm missing it, I haven't seen anything on Wix devs actually since the end of September. So October nor November. Um, so yeah, I don't think your messages are getting through. Uh, so you might check that first, make sure you're actually seeing them. Um, but Visual Studio, building Wix with Visual Studio 2022 is not yet supported, but is close. Uh, we. I have a change, a couple chains on my machine. Sean has one. Hopefully, we're going to get a couple of these in uh, through the rest of this week. And hey, maybe as early as uh, next week, things will finally be building on 2022. Um, and then after that, we can debate whether we should just standardize on 2022 as the build. Um, actually, I'm going to toss that out. Do you guys care, Sean, Bob? Do you guys, you guys both have 2022 now? I will. <laughs> you will. I don't. But probably will um, it's I, I think uh, it feeds into the library question as well yeah um, because we'll right yeah you know, we need to support the on 2022 so to an extent it's kind of like we have no choice we must it would be so fantastic if we could build 143 and have it work for 142 141 absolutely that would be fantastic but because we have to build for v143 anyway kind of VS22. Traditionally, we always require the latest version of Visual Studio. Yep. The, I, only, I the, really the only downside is the 64-bit MS build, but I don't know. If, uh, we'll just have to make sure the x86 one still works. It wasn't like we were doing the other way around when it was x86 by default, and it wasn't like we were testing 64-bit MS build very often anyway either. So. Right, right. So, yeah. Um, Mark, you're going to so, have to look into your email server they're not getting to us, but other people are getting them. So I think you'll you'll have to debug your mail a little bit. Um, but Visual Studio 2022 support hopefully early next week, barring many other things. But I was able to get through the build myself, so I'm pretty confident that 2022 building should work out um, much better. And then if you come up with the list of the the workspace. Although I think Bob, didn't you come up with a minimal or Sean? When you guys came up with a minimal list of work workloads, whatever it is that you had to install. Oh, oh. it's uh, workloads is just desktop.net and, des and desktop C++. But then you have to go in and pick all the turn on ARM. The right? ARM. Yeah, yeah, it's the ARM. And for now, anyway, we need you know you have to install the v140, v141 um, tool right. sets. Across x86, x64, and ARM64. Right. Man, oh, that would be really nice if we don't have to do that. Yeah. yeah I, I uploaded my configuration to that issue that we created for the building yeah. the C++. Yeah, um, we, it would be great if we got that. We should put down the website near that building. But I don't know if that's minimal. That's just what I had. Yeah, I, I'm, that, that's the problem. It's like, oh, now it builds. Right. You're... You know, you included Linux, probably not necessary. <laughs> but I mean, but, I did try to only select things I needed, so. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it's a good place to start. It's like, well, here's, uh, Sean has proven this works. <laughs> Maybe you can although, get with less. If so, let us know. <laughs> although and I we'll, guess that is 2019, not 2022. Yeah, I figures, yeah. So anyway, uh, we can wander our way down to that um, and, and see where it goes. All right. Those things, those things, Ron didn't get back to me about what's broken in 480, so I'm a little bit worried. Um, what's going on there? Maybe it's nothing. Yeah, I don't know. But I think 472 well, is where we're at anyway, so maybe I'm not worried about 48. I actually, but I have 48 on this Win 10 box, so yeah, anyway. All right. Yeah, Win 48's been out like two and a half years, so. Yeah, <laughs> a long time. It's, well, the last one we're going to get. So. All right, cool. 
All right. Um, yes, right. Last one. Uh, they have to make sure they don't cross over with .NET 5 because then the whole branding blows up. Yeah, like like it's so good right now. <laughs> <laughs> At least they can make the claim that they didn't overlap any of the terms, even though it's terribly, massively confusing to talk about the different things in the extreme. All right. Um, you just have to be very precise. .NET Framework 4. .NET 6. Always the number. All right, I think that's all we got. I'm not seeing anything come in. So two weeks from now is the 16th. So that should work out just fine, I think. And then two weeks after that is the 30th. So I think I lied at the beginning, and we might actually have two more meetings. Um, we may have two more meetings, 16th and 30th. So we'll go from there. Uh, yeah, Mark, all of my mails are Office 365 hosted as well, and they're going through. So I don't know. Try a uh, try a different mail host real quick, see if that works, and can work backwards back to the, the, the other one. That sometimes worked for people. Um, did, did we ever create a discussion area? And there is a discussion area on, on Wix toolset issues slash discussions. Wix toolset issues. Discussions. I think that's Get the URL. GitHub.com slash Wix toolset slash issues slash discussions. Um, so that's another place to try. Um, all right. So it looks like we actually will have three meetings this month, which is kind of a surprise because it's the 16th and then the 30th. Those sound like normal times, unless all of us disappear for the time between um, Christmas holiday and the New Year holiday. But we'll see where we go from there. Okay. Two weeks from now, December 16th, same time. In between then, I'm sure I will broadcast live if you want to come hang out and just you know, talk about Wix stuff as opposed to triage and things like that. I pick a topic and I roll with it. Last time I did documentation, it was exciting. I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was necessary. It was good. Two weeks from now, same time, still same place, and we will uh, talk to you then. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye.